Hi everyone, welcome back. In this short tutorial, I am going to talk to you about something called Segment Anything Model. In fact, this was released two days ago, literally on April 5th by Meta AI. And uh, many of you already left messages on my LinkedIn or Twitter asking for this specific tutorial. So I'm gonna walk you through the process of importing the model, that pre-trained model that these guys generously shared and segmenting your own images. And I'm gonna do that on my own IDE locally because I have a GPU. If not, you can use it on Colab. And again, you can find more code on their website if you want, but at least you'll get a good first uh, impression about what Segment Anything model is capable of doing by watching this tutorial. Again, if you are not a subscriber yet, this would be a great time to hit the subscribe button and also hit the thanks button if you're feeling extra generous. Okay, with that, let's jump in and I'm gonna quickly start by showing you a couple of web pages. And again, I'll leave all the links down in the description. Go ahead and look at uh, the description down below. So let's go ahead and jump in. And the first thing I wanna show you is this page. Go ahead and Google search for segment anything if you can't uh, wait to read the description down here. And uh, here you can actually get a bit uh, more information about what exactly it is, but more importantly, you can go to demo and you can uh, uh, upload your image and go ahead and do the stuff. And in fact, here what they do is, let's import an image right here. And there are a few things you can actually do. And uh, I mean, you can draw a box around something and it detects the object. Like for example, you do that and it's trying to identify the object. You can also go ahead, hover and click. Like you see how it's detecting these objects right there. So you can hover and click, uh, but that's not fun. Let's go ahead and import an image into using our Python code and detect all the objects. Okay, let's go to the next step where I would like to show you this uh, this blog and here they talk a bit more about what it actually does. It, this gives you a first glimpse of what exactly it does, right? So you have an image with a bunch of objects and it's going to de detect all the objects. And if you scroll down, they do they talk here about how it works? I mean, basically you have an image and uh, it, it gets, there's an encoder it gets converted into these embedding or represented by these embeddings. And on top of that, you can actually provide a mask or you can provide in information or mask in the form of points or box or text. I just showed you the box and the point uh, in a uh, you know uh, in their demo screen, but you, apparently I haven't tested the text part. But apparently you can actually say, hey, in this image, uh, find the scissors in this image or so on, right? So you can provide text, and maybe I'll explore that and do another video on this topic. But this is at a high level. This is exactly what it is uh, doing. Go ahead and read the original paper so you can get more information about exactly how it's working. But this tutorial is completely focused on just using a few lines of code. Pre load the pre-trained model and try to segment your images for various objects, right? So that's this tutorial is about. And again, the GitHub page, uh, their GitHub page is right here. And it talks about a bunch of stuff, everything, all the resources. So I don't need to walk you through uh, all of this, but I will walk you through the process of how I installed this on my system literally within 10, 15 minutes, right? I mean, completely from creating a new environment. So what did I do? I created a new uh, Conda environment for, for my uh, segmentation for this task. And then I, of course, installed PyTorch and uh, Torch Vision. So how did I do that? So in my case, first thing first, I, well, do I still have the, yeah, I just did this a few minutes ago. So I still have my uh, CUDA version where I checked what the CUDA version I have is and it's 11.0 and then i went ahead and google searched for okay for 11.0 what uh, pytorch version do i need and again on their website i kind of found this pip install torch 1.7 and by the way you need at least is that the did they get rep uh, yeah right here you need python at least 3.8 PyTorch 1.7, Torch Vision 0.8. Luckily for my GPU that I have and the CUDA version 11.0, uh, the Torch version was 1.7, is 1.7, Torch Vision 0.8. So I just copied this line from, from the PyTorch installation page and I did install uh, these libraries. And then I installed OpenCV Python if you don't have it already or and matplotlib if they are not installed by default. But 
more importantly, after that step, you go ahead and pip install this segment anything.get. Basically, nothing but the repository I just showed you, right? So this this one, segment anything.get. Uh, in my case, uh, uh, I just downloaded this as a zip. I unpacked it. In fact, I may still have it somewhere, but I unpacked it and I did, uh, I did, uh, you know, local pip installation. I hope you know how to do that. Pip install minus E dot while you are in that local repository. Okay. There you go. And then finally, you go ahead and download the default trained model. And that model, I believe, is about two and a half gigabytes. So make sure you have enough room. Uh, but that is the model. And if you want other models, then uh, you can follow this link that I just, uh, I, I have all of those in the description down below. And you can actually download this L, VIT L, SAM model, VIT B model. Again, I have no clue what these two are, but this is the default one that works on the generalized cases. So I went ahead and downloaded this. So that's it. That's the preparation. And once you're done, now let's actually start using the code, right? So first let's go ahead and import PyTorch and then let's import Torch Vision. And in case you don't believe me, let me go ahead and print the available versions. By the way, my Python version is 3.9.16 and my PyTorch is 171 and Torch, uh, Torch Vision is 0.8.2 and CUDA of course is available. So I'm all set to go. If not, it still works if you just work on CPU, but it will obviously be slow. Okay, next let's go ahead and import all the required libraries. And uh, now let's move down. I'm reading my image using OpenCV. It can be any library, but I'm using OpenCV and I'm converting BGR to RGB. So when I plot it, you can see how it looks like. Obviously, if you're using scikit-image to read the image, you don't have to convert BGR to RGB because scikit-image reads images in RGB. Okay, there you go. That's the image I'm going to work with. And again, I downloaded this image from a quick Google search. And these are all nothing but uh, the cross-section of these neurons. So our goal here is to segment these neurons. Moving on, now uh, my, my model or the checkpoint that uh, I have again let's go ahead and open this the model right there and what is the size 2.4 gigabytes so that's pretty large but let's go ahead and define our model right there and model type and the device equals to CUDA and let's go ahead and define this model or segment everything or anything I guess that's what this is model this will take a few uh, seconds to load and then let's go ahead and push that to the device OK, so there you go. And now let's uh, do the next step. And again, uh, I copied bulk of the code from from these guys, from meta people, you know, who are generous enough to share it. But uh, again, if you if you are creative enough, if you need more stuff, you know, go ahead and look at other examples that they have provided. But this, I think, 90% uh, of the time, this is probably what you're looking for. OK, and uh, there are several tunable parameters. Now, all we need to do is uh, create a uh, prediction, right? A mask generator. And this mask generator, let me create some room. Uh, this mask generator is used, is applied on your images to actually segment your images. This is the terminology they use, so I'm using exactly the same terminology. Or this can be segmentation creator, you know, if you want to call it. But this is basically what that is. Now, you do that by applying SAM automatic mask generator, which we imported from the segment anything uh, library right there. So this method is the one that is automatic mask generator. By the way, they have a few other methods. You can explore them where you can click, you can give, the region coordinates for your objects. So there are many things that you can do to provide as input, but in this case, let's just rely on the automatic mask generator, meaning it actually uh, it actually models your, I mean, sorry, it actually uh, scans your image uh, based on the settings that you uh, provide here. For example, points per slide, like side, like how many points you want to, you want this to automatically uh, survey to actually create this to, uh, generator. Okay, uh, so that's what we are using, and our model that we're going to use is called SAM because that's exactly what we uh, defined right here. And uh, the points per side, and by the way, did I put the link? Yeah, right here. Let's click on this link. One more. 
the reason I put that link is it explains exactly what these all parameters are. Yeah, it explains all the parameters down here. So go ahead and follow the link to learn more about it. But uh, IOU threshold is something I played with. This as obviously you can imagine. So this is the threshold. So the lower the threshold, the more objects it's you're letting through. So it may pick up some crap from the background. If you think there is a lot of junk that's being picked up, go ahead and increase the threshold. That's exactly what I did. The default was 0.86. I changed it to 0.9 and the stability score uh, threshold is again the score threshold. So it, it, think of this as okay post-processing after it actually did the segment do you want to include certain objects or filter uh, certain objects out and that threshold I set it to 0.96 and we'll probably I'll change that to 0.9 so you can see how uh, in fact let's go ahead and do 0.9 and 0.86 so you can see how the result looks like and we can change it so let us run this and once you define the generator now we are going to apply that generator to our image that's exactly what we are doing here and this takes some time so let's click this and pause the video for probably 30 seconds. Okay, so it well, it's done. And now if you print the length of masks, it is 284. That means 284 objects were detected in this. Uh, and do I have the masks right there? So if I open the masks variable right here, you can see it's a dictionary and each dictionary you know, you have area, bounding box, crop box, point. So all the information is right here. And what is the predicted IOU? In this case, it's 90% and 95% of stability score. So this is basically all the information for that specific object. And how many objects do you have? You have that's exactly what we printed down here, right? 284 objects in this image. So we take all that information in terms of the area and the locations. And here is a function that actually prints the, the or places this information onto your original image. So we can actually colorize these objects in random colors. That's exactly what we are printing. And again, the print or the plotting step may take a few seconds because we have a lot of objects. So let's go ahead and plot it. Okay, so it's done. So now let's look at the plot right there. So there you go. So here is the original image and here is it. And now I see a lot of junk. In fact, if you look at this area right there, that looks like it's one large object. And if I go back, you see that's just a background. It kind of, you see why it th thinks that it's, it's an object. So there is a lot of junk that I can clearly see. I'm not sure what's going on right here, if you see, and right there. So if, you, if I go back and forth, so let's see if that gets improved if we change our IOU threshold to 0 0.9 and this to 0 0.96, for example. Okay, so let's do all of these one more time. Okay, and first thing first, it uh, we can see that, okay, there are 226 objects now, and I forgot how many we got the last time, 284. So by adjusting the threshold, you can see how we got a lot fewer objects and hopefully more accurate objects, more realistic objects rather than all this background and everything. So this is like a sensitivity that you can adjust. Oh, sorry, these parameters and also go ahead and play with other parameters. But you can see now how this, this looks like. Yeah, let me go ahead and expand this so you can see it in a better way. Now let's go ahead and compare this image with the previous one. You see how, I guess in the previous one, it, it also recognized the entire background as an object because you see how it colored it in purple, but here you actually are detecting the real objects right there. Isn't that incredible? Now look at this small region right here, right? If I go back, it was kind of weird it's now accurate and this is how the original one is. Okay, so there you go. And uh, before I end this video, I just want to change this to, for those of you from remote sensing or not from microscopy, you can actually see another example, the houses.jpg. I tested this on a few images, it works great on no matter what I, uh, no matter what image I used. And I should mention, what is the primary, in my mind, the primary, I wouldn't use this yet, maybe later, for regular segmentation work, but I may use this to assist me in annotations. This can be a great annotating tool. 
if you are tired of annotating your objects, this, this can be a pretty good annotate, uh, annotating tool. So anyway, I changed this to houses and let's go ahead and run this uh, instead of running the whole thing. Let's go ahead and run this so you can see this is the image and let's see what it does. I haven't, uh, I, I did test this, but so I know what to expect. In fact, I think I included that on the landing screen. I did all that in the last 30 minutes, guys. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm forgetting exactly what I've done. Okay, so let's run all of these and have a quick look at the result and end this video. Okay, it's done. And as you can see, it is getting different parts of the house as different entities right there. So it's not getting the entire house. One thing you can do is actually define like boxes around each of these house. So you define exactly what you're trying to segment but in this case it's segmenting the front porch or whatever that area is you see how it's segmenting this and this uh, separate entities compared to the main main uh, house like this actually looks like probably garages right there and it's also segmenting the background like the grass in many of these cases but it's actually missing some missing grass like in some some areas obviously right here so this is where you go ahead and adjust your uh, adjust your settings to make sure it's uh, it's segmented the way you want it to segment. Okay, so with that, let's go ahead and end this video. I hope you find this to be useful. I'll keep exploring this. What I haven't done is uh, how do we do, for example, binary segmentation using this? How do we do multi-class segmentation? How do we handle multi-channel uh, data sets? So all of that, I haven't done this. And in future, I hope I'll do a video on that. And again, uh, this got released only two days ago and I'm doing the video based on your request. So please stay tuned for more videos related to this topic. And until then, keep learning and I'll see you in my next tutorial. Thank you.